Good afternoon, morning, night, midnight, whatever time you're watching this. My name is Mr. Koble. I am an eighth grade history teacher at Audubon Elementary. And today we are going to be talking about the Stamp Act, which is one of the main causes of the revolution and some other stuff too, I guess. We'll get around to it. So starting off with what is the Stamp Act? Um, the Stamp Act itself was a tax on every paper good in the colonies. Doesn't matter if it was a letter, a deck of playing cards, um, a pamphlet, a brochure, if it had paper, it's going to be taxed. Um, oh, just like that. Like literally everything. But how does that work exactly to tax paper? Well, they're going to show us. Holy smokes. 1964, Britain introduced the Sugar Act, forcing the colonists to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British and to pay duties on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely controversial Stamp Act, and it worked a little something like this. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? Yes, please. Okay. Stamp. Two pence, please. This is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so I can go gamble my pain away. Okay. No. Don't do it. Stamp. Obviously, the colonists were like, hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Until now, they had enjoyed relative... All right. So that's basically what the Stamp Act was, and that's why people started to get mad. Um, but this sounds awful. Why did it even exist in the first place? Going back to last lesson, uh, Britain went into a lot of debt after the French-Indian War. And the French-Indian War, the legacy of this is that it's going to be one of the huge cause of all these taxes that Britain starts to impose on the colonies. Because if you think about it from their point of view, Britain just spent a lot of money and like a lot of their men died fighting a war to protect the Brit the colonists. And it's kind of unfair to not have the colonists at least pay for at least pay for their share. You know, hey, we spent a lot of money protecting you. The least you could do is pay a little more in taxes. Um, and the people living in Britain thought it was ridiculous that their taxes went toward protecting Americans as opposed to helping themselves. Um, so once again, cause French Indian War. That is the actual stamp that was put on the pieces of paper. And, or I should say, that's the propaganda that was in the newspapers to convince the public that the Stamp Act was really bad. Um, so what was the colonists' response to all these new taxes on paper? Uh, they didn't like it. Long story short, you had mass protests. They would actually attack British, uh, British tax collectors, and they would boycott um, British goods. So here's the example of protests, you know, no Tea Act, no Sugar Act, you'll get into those later, and then no Stamp Act. Um, to boycott something means you stop buying their stuff, and they start losing money. Um, this picture is interesting. This is a tar and feather. So what happens is they put boiling, uh, boiling hot oil, maybe not boiling hot, but they put hot oil all over the British tax collector or British sympathizer, and then they coat them with chicken feathers. As like a, it's very painful and very humiliating. You can see in the background there's a noose where if they got really angry. Um, so yeah, America, violent protest, eh, it happened. Um, there was definitely a lot of violent protest before um, peaceful protest started. So this is definitely one of those things. But why were the colonists even mad in the first place? We know what their response was. We know uh, why it existed and we know what it was. But why were the colonists mad? Because basically they have to pay more for every single paper good, which is most things during this time. No one likes to pay more. The second thing and the biggest one was no taxation without representation, which is what they called it. So in Britain, the group of people that passed this law was called Parliament. In America, it's called Congress. Um, and the big reason that colonists were uh, really not happy with this is that throughout when you live in, okay, side note, um, when you, if you live in Britain, you elect a leader that represents your area 
that goes to London and argues on your behalf. We do the same thing in America. So we have senators and we have our House of Representatives. Uh, they go to Washington and they argue and vote on our behalf. The colonists did not have anyone like that. So basically colonists had no voting power over any of the taxes and laws that Britain was passing on them. So they were really upset. They were not being represented. Once again, protests, no taxation without representation. You'll, see, you'll still see signs like this every election. And then the biggest one, why do we even care? This is 300 years ago. Because of this, where they are literally hanging up a British tax collector in public, um, ended up turning to the, ended up starting um, the tr American tradition of protest that we see today. Now, I've, hopefully you've noticed, it's gotten a lot more peaceful today. Um, it's really gone a lot better. Um, but this kind of earlier like early example of the Stamp Act is really one of the founding blocks of American protest um, that we is like a key fundamental part of our life today. So what happened to the Stamp Act? Did all these boycotts and literally putting boiling oil on protest on tax collectors work? Well, kind of. Um, you had something called the Stamp Act Congress come out where each of the 13 colonies would elect one representative, and then they collectively voiced their disapproval of the Stamp Act. So if you're in Pennsylvania, you say, hey, Benjamin Franklin, we all want you to tell Britain that this is not chill. And then Franklin to go to Britain and say, Britain, this is not chill. And basically all the colonies had someone like that. But most importantly, of the reason the Stamp Act went away was because Britain was losing millions and million well no it's probably not millions back then it's probably thousands thousands and thousands of dollars over boycotts of british goods um and like life it's all about the benjamins so this was the stamp act congress these were the 13 um jabronis from the colonies that said britain this is not this is not chill and then rip britain businesses they lost money okay now your directions um I have on Google Classroom a Stamp Act quiz. Feel free to watch this uh, video lecture as many times as you need to. And basically for your mastery test, you gotta score 80% on this or more. Um, and then you will, oh, this was my pre-COVID lesson plan where you would um, create your own protest sign for something that has to do with the school. And uh, we'd walk around the school chanting and protesting. Um, but COVID, sorry. Um, you can try protesting something your parents will do, but I can't guarantee it'll end well for you. Um, but basically, Stamp Act quiz, Google Classroom, score 80% on more of this. That's your mastery task. Thank you for listening. Watch this as many times as you need to. Go Padres.